Drawing Ace from Super Pets is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey, hello, wonderful people! It's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. Just a quick note before we start, in this video I'm going to be using an app called Procreate which is on the iPad but you can follow along with any kind of digital art software you have because this is not going to be about any special, you know, Procreate feature at all. It is going to be really much more about the character breakdown, so the proportions and the colors and all of those. That being said, if you are working in Procreate and if you want to have my illustration as a reference like this, the way to do it is just going in the wrench icon menu here at the top, in the canvas set menu, activating the reference toggle, which is going to let you import an image. So if you want to download my reference along with the color palette that we're going to use in this video, they will both be linked in the description below and they're totally free. And if you follow my last video, which was for crypto, feel free to go ahead and open that file. Otherwise, just go ahead, create a canvas, whichever size you want. I'm personally using the size of my iPad screen. This is just a demo, so it doesn't matter that much. And we're going to start with just a super rough sketch mapping out the basic shapes of Ace. Now, if you are working in the file in which you created crypto, go ahead and group all of your crypto layers, hide that group, and then change the background color to white just so we can see our sketch really well. From there, create a new layer, rename it to sketch, and pick really whatever color for the sketch. It doesn't matter, we won't see it in the final result. I'm just going to use gray, but you can pick really whatever you like sketching with. And in this video, I'm always going to suggest a few different kind of brushes that you can use as usual. So there's always going to be a free Procreate brush. I'm also going to suggest how to find a brush alternative if you're working in a different software. And I'm also going to suggest brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. Now these brushes are absolutely not essential, but they can help you save time and get more professional results because they're super sensitive to the Apple Pencil. So if you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below. And as usual, there is a special promo code for the YouTube people. But again, it's really not essential, especially not for the sketch because again, we're not going to see the sketch in the final results. So at this stage, just pick a brush that you know you're comfortable with. If you're working in Procreate, a good free brush option would be in the sketching pack, the HB Pencil. If you're working in different software, again, anything you know you like to use for sketching or any brush that has pencil in the name. If you are working with the illustration bundle, though, go ahead and pick the sketching brush. So just like for crypto, we're going to start by mapping out a big circle for the front of the body. And I say circle, but as you can see, it really doesn't need to be precise. At this stage, it's going to be a rough, messy sketch, so don't worry if you have lines everywhere and if your lines are not perfect. Then we're going to draw another circle, which is going to be for the head. The head is pretty much in line with the body, so to help you, you can draw a vertical line that goes through the body. And then on top of the line, another circle. Now this circle should be a little bit smaller than the body. And finally, we're going to draw a third circle for kind of the hips. And this circle is going to be the smallest and it is going to be at a 45 degree angle from the body. So again, you can just draw a bit of a line there to help you. And it's going to be touching the body. So should look a little bit like this. Great, so from there, if we connect the top of these two circles, we're going to create the back. And then if we connect the bottom with a curve that is curving inwards, we are going to create the belly. And if we connect the head circle with the front of the body, we're going to create the neck. And we can add two long pointy ears on top of the head. So for the legs, just like for crypto, Ace has really strong, I guess, shoulders. Again, because they're both superhero dogs and in illustration and cartoons, usually superheroes tend to have a massive torso and gigantic shoulders. So it seems like DC went and did the same thing for these dogs. So to showcase that really big frame, we're going to draw two big ovals that are going to be essentially kind of the shoulder or top of the front legs. So one here one here 
And then we're going to draw two longer ovals that are going to reach towards roughly the bottom of this lower circle to create the leg itself. And finally, you can add two flat ovals for the paws. The back legs are going to be even easier, so you can draw one big oval on the left side of the hip circle, and then another oval that is going to be the same size, but is going to be rotated to follow along that kind of 45 degree angle we have with the body. And you can draw another flat oval for the back feet here, and then another one, but this one is going to be longer because as you can see, the paw is kind of turned instead of facing us. From there, you can zoom onto the face, and we're going to draw a plus sign to help us place the facial features, such as a vertical line and a slightly curved horizontal line. In the middle of that line, we're going to draw a big rounded triangle for the nose. And then we're going to use the horizontal line to create, I guess, the shape of, of the face. So just following that horizontal line and then dragging it downwards, back up, and down again on the other side. The eyes for now, we're going to keep them pretty simple. So just drawing two U-shapes and then a flat line on top. Great. So at this stage, if you feel like your sketch is not exactly how you want it to be, that is totally normal. The reason we are working first with basic shapes is so that we can quickly draw everything and then go in and easily move stuff around, rotate stuff, change the proportions to make sure that we can have as strong as a base structure as possible. So what I mean by that, for example, I feel like my head and neck, they're both a little bit too far angled like this. And I would like them to be a little bit more in the front. It is super easy to correct because again, we're just working with basic shapes. So to fix it, all I would have to do is use a selection tool in Procreate. There's one right here, setting it to freehand and then drawing a selection around the basic shapes I want to move. Then with an error tool, I can move them around, rotate them, resize them, anything I want to do. And it just takes a few seconds. So take all the time you need here to play with your rough sketch just to make sure the structure is exactly how you want it to be. It doesn't need to be pretty or clean at all at this stage. We just want to make sure that the proportions are what we want. And once you're happy with your rough structural sketch, we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be creating a cleaner version of this, which is going to become our line art. Okay, so let's clean up this crazy looking sketch and turn it into a clean line art. And for that, it's going to be really helpful to just lower the opacity of the sketch so it's not quite as distracting. I'm going to keep mine a little bit more opaque so you can see it in my video, but make sure you lower yours as much as possible before the sketch just completely disappears. Then go ahead and create a new layer above your sketch and rename it to line art. And here for the line art, you can really use any color of your choice. Later in the video, I'm also going to show you how to recolor your line art. For now, just pick something that you know you're going to be able to see well and differentiate well from the sketch itself. So it could be really any kind of color. I'm going to pick, uh, what am I going to go with? Hmm. I'm going to go with just a random teal right here. <laughs> And in terms of brushes here, as usual, you have a few different options. I personally like to have texture in my line art. And for that, if you're working in Procreate, you could go back in the sketching pack, so free brush, and switch from the HB pencil to the 6B pencil. It's just a little bit thicker, so I think it works better for outlines. If you are working in a different software, just sticking to anything that has pencil in the name is probably your best bet. And if you are working with the illustration bundle, you could switch from the sketching brush to the outlines brush. That being said, if you're not someone who likes, you know, texture in their line art, that's totally okay. Just go with some sort of an inking brush, like a studio pen or something like that, and that should work really well too. Now at this stage, it's not super complicated, honestly. All we have to do is go over our lines and decide which one we actually want to use for the final illustration. So long story short, all we have to do is just trace. So I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus on drawing your line art. I'm going to keep my video going in the background so you can use it as a reference. And once we're done tracing what we already have, we're going to meet back up to finish the line art, adding all the other little elements we're missing, like the bandana, the tooth, and other little things like that.
So once you have the line art for your basic structure, go ahead and zoom in onto the face so that we can add all the missing facial features, starting with, I guess, kind of the eyebrows. So the eyes, which I forgot to close, give me a second to do that, there we go. You can, going from the inside corner, extend that a little bit upwards. And then on top of that, adding this kind of Nike swoosh for the bra bone. We're going to leave the eyes blank for now and we're going to move on to the nose and the nose is pretty simple. We're just going to draw two nostrils. We're going to draw a line that connects the nose with the mouth. We're going to add a little tooth on the left side and this kind of floppy lip part, I guess. So just kind of a, just kind of like this. At this stage, it is a good time to add the bandana as well. So pretty much at the base of the neck where it would connect with your torso circle, you can add a semicircle, and then two kind of pointy floppy shapes for the ends of the bandana. And then you can draw the bandana itself, so just a slightly curved horizontal line at the base of the neck. And then just a floppy triangle to map out the shape of the bandana itself. Now if like me you left the feet open, this is the time where you could draw them and I personally like to just draw a few different ovals to showcase the toes. So yeah, you can just close the feet by drawing four long ovals. Okay, so take all the time you need to, you know, finish up your line art until you're super happy with it. If there's anything that you want to move around, now is the second best time, I guess, to do it. The best time was when we were drawing just the basic rough sketch, but it is still going to be much easier to make any change at this phase before we start adding the colors. So really take all the time you need here to make sure your line art is exactly how you want it to be. And then we're going to move on to the colors. Great, so at this stage we can delete the sketch, we won't need it anymore. And we're going to start the coloring phase by creating a silhouette of the dog. So go ahead and create a new layer, rename it to dog shape. And we're going to pick that main kind of gray color we're going to use for most of Ace, which if you're working in the color palette, it is this color right here on the top left. As you can see, it is a pretty dark desaturated brown. Now, to create the silhouette, the goal is to have a brush that doesn't have any texture to it or any kind of feathering or anything like that. So if you're working with free Procreate brushes, that would mean in the painting pack, nope, airbrushing pack, <laughs> there we go, the hard brush, making sure that the opacity of your brush is at 100%. So if you watch any of my watercolor videos, that's always something you need to remember, bringing your brushes back up to 100% opacity. If you're working in a different software, just the most basic round brush you can find is what you want at this stage. And if you're working with my illustration bundle, just picking the base round brush. And here it's going to be super simple. You're just going to outline your entire character and then fill in that outline to create your silhouette. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and leave me a comment with um, what could it be? Let me know if there is a cartoon character you would like me to do a breakdown of. And if you're new on the channel, you might be a bit confused with what is the secret password thing. Usually it is a secret word that I hide, and this video is more of a question or a prompt. But the secret password does a few things. One of them is just that it's nice for me because, you know, you know me, you see my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you are. And whenever you leave a comment, no matter what the comment is, I get to sometimes see your face, sometimes see your name, or just a username. And it's just really great to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on the channel.
But probably the most important reason for the secret password is that it does give me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better and that helps me create better tutorials for you. So go ahead and just leave me a comment telling me which other cartoon character you would like to have a breakdown of and then we're going to keep going. Great, so once you have your silhouette, we're going to color block the different elements on separate layers, starting with the bandana. So go ahead and create a new layer below the line art, but above the dog shape. Rename it to bandana. And just so that it stays within the dog shape, we are going to apply it as what is called a clipping mask. So if you're working in Procreate, you just tap on the bandana layer and then select in clipping mask in the menu. And with that clipping mask activated, it means everything we draw on this bandana layer is now going to stay within the dog shape. If your software doesn't have clipping mask, it really is not a big deal. You just need to be a little bit more careful so that when you draw your outline, you're staying within the lines. But that's really all that means. So Ace has this kind of grayish blue bandana. If you're working in the color palette, it is this color right here. As you can see, yeah, it's pretty much gray with just a tiny, tiny hint of blue. And it is pretty much middle of the way in terms of the brightness. Otherwise, it's the same thing. We're just going to outline the shape and then fill it in. We're also going to color block the eyes, so just a new layer, but this one we're not going to apply it as a clipping mask, and I'm going to show you why in a second. So just new layer above the bandana, not as a clipping mask, and below the line art. Renaming that layer to eyes, and here we're going to go in with pure white. And might as well also map out the tooth on this layer. From there we're going to draw the pupil and the iris and to make it super easy we're just going to create a new layer above the eyes still below the line art. We're going to rename it to pupil although we're also going to draw the iris on that one. It doesn't really matter though. And we're going to apply this pupil layer as a clipping mask onto the eye so that we can make sure the pupil is going to stay within the eye shape. So again, just tapping on a layer in the menu, selecting clipping mask. And Ace has really nice blue eyes in the color palette. It is this blue right here, which as you can see is a pretty bright blue that is fairly desaturated. Not as much as the bandana, but still quite a lot. And from there, you can quickly just draw a circle and since it is applied as a clipping mask it is going to stay again within the eye shape. And the beauty of using this technique for eyes is that if you want to change the direction your character is looking in it's super easy you just use the arrow tool and then you can move the shapes around to change the direction your character is looking in super easily and super quickly. Now we're also going to draw the pupil, so just picking a super super dark brown in the color palette, it is going to be this one right here, it's just an even darker and less saturated version of the base brown we use for the rest of the dog. And once more we're just going to draw a circle. And we can also add a bit of a highlight, so just going back to our pure white and then adding a dot in the eye. Now the last two colors we're going to map out are going to be that kind of cream belly and then the inside of the ears. But for that we're just going to switch to a brush that is a little bit more texture so that it doesn't look quite as harsh of a transition between the two colors. So you have a few options. As usual, if you're working with free brushes, go ahead and locate the charcoal packs. So brushes that come with Procreate and pick the willow charcoal. If you're working in a different software, anything that has charcoal in the name should work really well. If you don't have any charcoal brush, you could stick with pencil, but with a bigger size, that might work too. And if you're working with my illustration bundle, just go ahead and pick the basic texture brush. 
So here, once more, we're going to create a new layer. We're going to put this layer between the bandana shape and the dog shape. And if you're working in Procreate, it should automatically be applied as a clipping mask because it is, you know, between the bandana and the dog shape. But if it doesn't get automatically applied or if it just kicks out the bandana out of being a clipping mask, just make sure that you manually apply it and make sure that you also fix the bandana. And we're going to rename this new layer to cream color. So for the cream color in the color palette, we're going to pick this one right here. As you can see, it's just a much lighter version of the base brown we use, and it's also way less saturated. And from there, we're just going to loosely paint over the area that we want to have as cream. So it's going to be all the bottom part of the face except for the lip. And then the middle section of the neck, as well as the belly. And there's also going to be a little patch on the bottom part of this front leg. We're also going to do the inside of the ears. So once more, just a new layer between the bandana and cream color. This layer we're going to rename to ears. And we're going to use kind of a dirty pink. So in the color palette, this one right here, as you can see, is almost an orange and it is quite desaturated. And you're just going to draw the inside of the ears. Now before we move on to shading and recoloring the outlines, we're just going to set the background color, maybe reactivate crypto if you're working in that file. So just kind of getting everything organized a little bit. And for that, it might be helpful to group all the layers that you have for Ace. So if you're working in Procreate, the way to group layers is you just swipe them towards the right with one finger. Select the group option, and then you can collapse the group, rename the group to Ace. Then I'm going to reactivate my crypto <laughs> and move them both and resize them both so that they are exactly how I want them to be. And you can use any color of your choice for your background. I think on the movie poster, they're going with a white background, but I'm personally going to set my background to a dark blue. So if you're working in Procreate, you can just select the background color layer and then set your color there. If you're working in a different software, just create a new layer, put it below the dogs, and then just fill in that layer with the color. And if you're working with the color palette, it is going to be this blue right here. As you can see, pretty dark, pretty desaturated. And really quickly, just so the background is not quite as flat, we're also going to add a bit of a light gradient. So just creating a new layer below the dogs. Renaming it to background gradient. And we're going to pick a lighter version of the blue, so in the color palette. This one right here. And then with really any brush, you're just going to draw a circular shape on the top left. Then filling that shape. And using any kind of blurring feature you have in your software. Most software will have something called Gaussian Blur. In Procreate, it is in the adjustment panel here. Gaussian blur. You're going to add as much or as little blur as you want to create the light gradient. So before we start shading, which is going to be pretty easy, we're going to keep it really simple in this video. We're going to quickly recolor the outline so it doesn't look quite as crazy. Now to do that, you have a few different methods you can use. The easiest is going to be activating on your line art layer what is called alpha lock. So to do that, you have a few different ways if you're working in Procreate, either just tapping on a layer and then activating it from the menu right here. Or you can just swipe your layer towards the right with two fingers, which as you can see is going to activate alpha lock. And with alpha lock activated, it means now whatever we draw on this line art layer is going to stay within the lines that are already there, which means we can just pick a color and brush really quickly and it's going to recolor the lines. 
If you don't have alpha lock in your software, pretty easy. Just go ahead and create a new layer above your line art it applied as a clipping mask. So that way you can paint your new color onto that layer and they're going to stay within the lines that you had on the line art. And here we're going to stick with the same kind of texture brush we use or charcoal brush. And you can simply just color pick the different colors that you use and make them darker. Or if you're working in the color palette, the darker version of the base color is going to be to the right of that base color. So darker version of the brown is right here, darker version of the cream is here, darker version of the bandana blue is right here. Great, so last thing we have to do is do some quick shading. We're going to keep it really simple. It's mostly going to be to help separate the different elements. So go ahead and create a new layer above all the dog shape elements. So it should be right above the bandana, making sure it is below the eyes. And rename this layer to shadows. Now we're going to apply it as a clipping mask as well so our shadows stay within the dog shape. And here you could, if you want, just color pick the different colors you have on the dog make them darker and then, you know, paint your shadows that way. That could work. Or we could use a blending mode so that we can just pick one color, paint all the shadows with that one color, and then that color, because it is applied as a blending mode, or at least the layers apply as a blending mode, is going to adapt to whatever is underneath it. Now to find blending modes in your software, usually it is going to be with the opacity selector. So in Procreate, you just tap on the nil N next to the check mark. And here we're going to pick a blending mode called Linear Burn and go ahead and for now start by lowering opacity around 40%. And in terms of the color you use for your shadow, that's totally up to you. The only thing I always recommend is avoid going with anything neutral like in the gray region because then your shadows are going to be super muddy. But otherwise feel free to experiment with anything. The only thing I would recommend on top of not using gray is if you did draw crypto, Previously, try to stick with the same kind of color you use so that your shadows kind of make sense together. I'm personally going to use this color right here in the color palette, which again was the same one I used for crypto. It is kind of a desaturated pink. And then sticking with the same charcoal or texture brush, we're just going to zoom in onto the face and start by adding shadow in the eye crease area. You can also add a shadow between the head and the ear. Well, on the ear <laughs> where it connects with the head, I should say. You can also add one towards the bottom part of the face, especially kind of in that lip fold right here. That's super important. We're also going to draw a shadow below the head onto the neck and then kind of on the right side of the neck. We're also going to draw a pretty soft shadow on the top part of the bandana. Then a thin, clearly defined shadow right below the bandana right here. Maybe a tiny one on this side too. We're going to add one on the top of this leg to kind of showcase the muscles. And then one on this side as well. We're going to shade the belly area because, you know, the legs are in front so there's just no light reaching there. We 
we're going to shade pretty much this entire back leg and the left side of this front leg. And we're also going to quickly shade the bottom part of the feet. Now I know I went pretty quickly over all the shadows here, so feel free to pause the video as needed and, and just use this still image as your reference to keep mapping out the shadows. Otherwise, we're going to blend them in a little bit to make them a little bit nicer and smoother. So using the smudge tool, which in most software is going to be this kind of little finger icon, and Procreate is right next to the paintbrush. And setting this smudge tool to either a soft brush, that would be probably your best bet in any kind of other software, or if you're working in Procreate, you can set your smudge tool to the stucco brush from the free painting pack that comes to Procreate. And then you can just use the smudge tool to play with your shadows as needed. Great, so just one last little step before moving on to the light, we might want to add a ground shadow. So for that, just go ahead and create a new layer outside of the dog group, right above the background gradient layer. Rename this new layer to ground shadow. And for that layer, use the same blending mode that you use for the shadows on the dog, so in my case, linear burn, and set it to roughly the same opacity. I think I had 42 or something like that. It doesn't need to be the exact same, but something in the same vein. And with the same color, same brush, you can just quickly paint a shadow below the dog. So we're almost done. We just need to add a couple different kinds of light. The first one is going to be with the technique that I called outlining your outlines. And it's really going to help make the character pop because right now it's kind of all blending together a little bit, especially in the face. So go ahead and create a new layer above your shadow layer within dog group. Rename this new layer to lights, or highlights actually. Wow, that was, that was a bit of a mess. <laughs> Apply it as a clipping mask so it stays within the dog shape. And here we're going to use the blending mode add. Now add is really super strong, so we're also going to lower the opacity, this time probably between 20 and 30%. And just like for the shadows, you can pick whatever color you want, but I recommend matching it with the color you use for your lights if you drew crypto. So in the color palette, I'm going to go with this really bright yellow right here. And for this, you could go back to the brush you use for your outlines or sticking with a charcoal brush or the basic texture brush, but just making it smaller. That's totally up to you. Honestly, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. And we're literally just going to outline any outline that is facing towards the top left of the canvas. So for example, we're going to have a highlight here on the top left of the face, top left of the ears. You get the idea. So you can just go over your entire character and as you can see already, it takes a few seconds, but it's really going to make everything pop so much more. And feel free to cheat. For example, I feel like on the bandana, I want these folds to be a little bit more clear. So although they're not facing top left, I'm still going to add a bit of a highlight there. You know, we're not going for realism here anyway. So just go ahead and if you feel like you need to add a highlight somewhere, trust your instinct and just add it there too. And last but not least, since Ace is quite dark, we might actually want to add a bit of that kind of blue from the background onto him because it would be reflecting on its dark fur. 
So go ahead and create a new layer, put it between the highlights and the shadows layer, which means it should automatically get applied as a clipping mask. Rename this layer to blue light. And this one won't be a clipping mask, but you can go ahead and lower the opacity, probably around 50% for now. And you're just going to pick the lightest blue that you use in your background or any other light color you use in your background. Again, in color palette, it was this one right here. And here, make sure you're using either a charcoal brush or the basic texture brush from the illustration bundle and increasing the size of the brush again so that you can gently brush over the top of the head and then the top left side of the body. Now, once you have all your shadows painted, all your highlights and this kind of blue light layer, feel free to go back and just play with the opacity of those different layers until you have the kind of contrast you want. I feel like my blue light is way too intense. I'm going to decrease it around, around 30. Um, let's see if I want to increase my shadows. Yeah, I'm probably going to set my shadows around 50 and bring up my highlights a little bit more, around 40%. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to draw more of your favorite characters like Crypto, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a few more characters breakdown for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.